Welcome to my beginner's guide to SnowRunner. With the latest release of Season 10 Fix and Connect and also SnowRunner being put on PS Plus Extra this week, I figure we are going to see an influx of newer players. These tips are meant for beginners, but anyone can probably benefit from them as I still learn new things all the time. For the majority of this video, I'll be staying on the very first map of the game, Black River, Michigan. I do show something from another region briefly, and if you want to see what that is, make sure you stick around. I'm assuming you've gone through the tutorial already and hopefully returned back to Michigan, as you are definitely not ready for Alaska. Leave the GMC in the garage and open the map. If you haven't already, select the Fleet Star from the list and jump into it. Now you can't drive it anywhere because it's completely broken, but just recover it to the garage. It will now be repaired and this should be the truck you use until you can afford something better. Make sure you add all-wheel drive to the Fleet Star before leaving the garage. Next, you have a few options. You can start doing contracts right away in the Fleet Star, or you can jump back into the Chevrolet CK1500 and continue to explore the map to hit all the watchtowers and pick up any upgrades and tasks along the way. I would suggest the latter and go do some scouting. Take it easy and don't go too fast, although that shouldn't be too much of a problem with the trucks you start out with. It's going to be really slow in the beginning. You will get stuck a lot. SnowRunner isn't about speed, and to be honest, the quickest, shortest looking routes will end up taking longer because you'll inevitably get stuck or flip your truck and dump your cargo, which means unless you want to leave your cargo on the side of a mountain, you'll have to go on a rescue mission with another truck. You will make a lot of mistakes and it will surely be frustrating sometimes. You will absolutely also have to use your winch a ton, especially with these early trucks with no upgrades. Winching can be finicky too, especially on consoles. First person view will be better with quick winching to what you have in your camera facing, so it works really well to catch points directly in front of your view. And I've also found a trick that works well if there's a bunch of winch points to cycle through and it just never seems to go the direction you want it to. It's kind of hard to show, but if you spin your camera while simultaneously cycling through winch points and stopping the camera at the spot you want to winch to, it almost always is on the point or very close by. Go around and scout out the map, pick up tasks that are doable while scouting and save contracts for later. I typically stick with one map until I can't do anything else there without traveling to another map for cargo. Look out for tasks or contracts that fix things like roads or open new buildings. Fixing roads and bridges is a huge part of almost every region and they should be prioritized. Always activate tasks you discover. You don't have to play them in any order, but if you don't activate them, they will not be selectable from the mission menu on the map, and it can be beneficial to have them here as you'll be able to see what is required for it instead of having to drive all the way back to the pickup location. Also, don't drive scouts into the deep mud. Drive on the grass. If you can keep one side of your truck off the path, you usually won't get stuck chassis deep in mud. Sometimes it'll take turning your wheels back and forth to keep your truck moving through deep mud. Low gear is also really important. If you see your wheels kicking up mud or water, then you need to shift into low gear. Spinning wheels is not good, and like in real life, will just dig you deeper. Use the map frequently, plan your routes, set waypoints, lots of them, especially until you learn the map and know which routes to take. You can also manipulate your route by holding the button on the blue line, and you can also grab and drag points around. Driving off the beaten path sometimes is a good thing and sticking to the edges of roads can be as well, but be careful because that's not always the case and just because it doesn't look like it's a muddy area, it could be the deepest mud on the map. So always keep that in mind and take your risk accordingly. Muddy routes will also get harder to travel through the more times you take that path. This can be reset by going through a gateway to another map, just make sure you do not have a truck in that specific area because if there is a truck sitting there, it will not reload that terrain. Always track your current objective and make sure it doesn't require a specific trailer or item already on the map. It will be noted by a magnifying glass icon or an up arrow. You can also click on the listed items in the menu and it will move the map to the location. You may use all the trailers you find on the maps, even sell them. Some trailers are used for tasks or contracts and they cannot be sold. Sometimes after they are delivered, they do not disappear and they will just be grayed out in the list. I also like to drag a trailer behind my hitch trailer in order to save a trip on cleaning up trailers because selling trailers around the map can provide you with quite a bit of money. Keep in mind though, you cannot sell trailers in hard mode. Fuel trailers that are mission trailers can still be used for fuel, just make sure you leave at minimum 10% fuel upon delivery or else you will have to refill it at a station before it will be accepted for delivery. The trucks you get for free in Michigan can take you a long way, so keep them. Yes, even the GMC. It's a great fuel-efficient truck once you find all-wheel drive and dip lock for it, which is why it's very important to scout maps and grab all watchtowers and pick up all upgrades. Now, I debated for a while on whether I should mention the Tega. It's a Russian truck that has always-on all-wheel drive and always-on diff lock. You can put a van body add-on onto your Fleet Star and then retain it. 
It'll only cost $4,500, so you should be able to swing that. If not, you may just have to sell something. The Scout 800 that's findable in Black River isn't that great, so I'd suggest selling that if you need some money. Then go to the global map and go to Tamir. Get your fleet star out and follow along this path that I take. It's pretty close by the garage, but the fleet star is going to struggle in this terrain, so you have to be very patient. Drowned Lands has a lot of mud on the roads and paths, and it is actually smart to drive off to the sides of the roads, or even through wooded areas sometimes. You need to watch out for roots though, as they are arguably worse than stumps, and that's what I got stuck on here. It took forever to winch myself in different directions to get out of it, so do not go straight down the tire track path here, go off to the left side. When you arrive to the broken Tega, just repair it, and then swap fuel from the Fleet Star to the Tega. Once complete, the Tega will be yours for free. You can then recover both trucks to the garage and move back to Michigan. You now have a really good truck for Michigan, and it's probably a little too good. Some people would disagree with this, but if it makes the game more enjoyable for you, then I say go for it. I've seen so many people say they gave up on this game because they couldn't drive anywhere in Michigan. You could also explore Tamir a bit with it and pick up some upgrades as well to make the truck even better, but it isn't necessary and it will be totally fine in its current state for Michigan. This truck will probably make Michigan feel really easy, so you can decide on whether you want to use it or not, but I just wanted to add this in case there's someone out there who was just really struggling with the game, because it really is very difficult and frustrating in the beginning. All you really need to do is just put some better tires on it as soon as possible. You should be able to at least do all terrains by now, and the best tires for this truck will be the OHD1 off-road tires. You can play all of the maps you own in any order. The first three vanilla regions are increasing in difficulty, and therefore many play those in order from left to right. I'd suggest doing them in order starting with Michigan, then Alaska, and then Tamir. The next four are part of the year one pass and have a steep increase in difficulty as well, at least Kola Peninsula and of course the finale Amur. We're up to season 10 now, which is the second region release for year three so far. Check the list in your player's profile to see if you've missed any tasks on your current map. They will have a check mark if you have completed them. You can also check to see that you have gotten all watchtowers, trucks, and upgrades for that region, as well as see all of your own trucks and where they are currently. Lastly, you can view the contests and trophies on this screen as well. One quick thing to mention about contests, you do not have to get gold on them, all you have to do is complete them with a the bronze and there is no time limit on the bronze. Use the excellent MapRunner website if you really can't find an upgrade or a missing task. There's a link to it in every one of my SnowRunner video descriptions. I would suggest leaving logging missions for last. They are often the most difficult to do, and for some reason the log pickup areas are always just giant mud pits. They are also usually surrounded by stumps, which will actually cripple pretty much every truck in the game, and leave you high centered spinning like a top. Now when it comes to logging, there are different things you need for short, medium, and long logs. You won't come across short logs until a mirror, which is considered the hardest region, and also a paid DLC as the finale to year one. But medium and long logs both require different trailers in order to transport them. Long logs require the truck add-on and then a trailer add-on from the trailer store, whereas medium logs just have a trailer from the trailer store, and some trucks can have a medium log add-on, however most trucks that can do this cannot also pull the trailer in conjunction. If you think logging feels like an afterthought, you are 100% correct. If you do not know, SnowRunner is technically a sequel. There was a game called MudRunner that primarily focused on logging. Now SnowRunner was my first game in the franchise and I still have never played MudRunner, but logging was added late to SnowRunner and wasn't originally in the game upon release. They have made improvements on it since with new trailers and add-ons, but it used to take hours to complete the Michigan logging contracts because it took multiple trips across maps. Now with all that being said, if I was going to recommend any mods in this video, it's Olsum's Trailer Pack. It has a lot of super useful trailers, especially logging ones, that would just make your life easier. The link is in the description of all of my SnowRunner videos, so check it out if that interests you. A little bit of just some random SnowRunner gameplay here, just because I don't have a clip for this part. But in normal mode, gas is free, recovering to garages is free, and buying and selling trailers and attachments is for the same amount of money as you purchase them. There is little loss on selling trucks and rebuying them, it's about 10%. Nothing is free in hard mode, but if you're new, I wouldn't suggest hard mode anyway. Feel free to recover to a garage after a mission to save time and repair refuel your truck for free. You will have to detach trailers in order to recover though, and any cargo on your truck will be removed. However, you may be nearby another task or a contract location, so check that first. Also remember, you can sell stuff when you equip new tires, gearboxes, and engines. You will also get them back at the same price in normal mode. Another really good tip is if you aren't near a fuel station but are near a trailer store, 
you can purchase a fuel trailer and use it to fill up your tank and then sell it back to the trailer store for the same price you bought it for. This only works in normal mode, so don't try to do this in hard mode as you cannot sell trailers in hard mode. You can fast forward the time from the map screen. It's triangle for me on PlayStation, but it should denote whatever button it is for your platform at the bottom of the screen. There are four settings to choose, night, morning, afternoon, and evening. Night can be difficult on some maps, but it's also really, really nice on some maps, like the Northern Lights in Kola Peninsula, for example. Also, overloading your truck with light bars can be counterintuitive. It will be overly bright and actually make it harder to see, especially on the snowy maps. Take the time to learn about tire statistics. Typically, if the truck can use OHD1, then they should be the only tires you use. If they can't, but can use MSH tires, then they should be your next choice. And this is not to be confused with MHS tires as they are very different. OHS2 or UOD2 would be your next options after that. Now the Tega has these really cool looking balloon tires, but they are not better than the OHD1 off-road tires. If you're using any Zeke's trucks, use the ZHM tires on them as they have the best stats specifically for the Zeke's trucks. And they have different stats depending on which Zeke's truck you're using, either the 605R or the 612H. Chains really aren't worth it as they only benefit you on icy asphalt, and typically you can keep two tires off the asphalt on the edge of the road and make your way up icy roads just fine without them. Take the time to learn how gearboxes work. Learn to force shift by tapping the clutch button in auto to force the gearbox to change to the best gear. It'll work downshifting and upshifting. Learn when to use the high gear is typically the second highest gear in most boxes, so you keep the truck in a higher gear, but not the highest speed. It'll avoid shifting around in auto, which can stop your truck or slow it down, especially while on hills. It's also important to note that trucks with an engageable diff lock will disengage it automatically if you use auto reverse, but not if you shift into the actual reverse gear. One last thing to mention, which doesn't really pertain to gearboxes, but when winching other trucks, if the winch truck is operational, Make sure you turn on the engine by pressing the appropriate button while winched. It will cause the winch truck to actually drive its wheels as well, and it helps immensely for towing vehicles. The last piece of advice I can give is to join the subreddit. Lots of people are super helpful and will give other tips that I may have missed. It's also just a great place to share things and see what other people are doing on the game as well. The other three maps here in Michigan are Smithville Dam, Island Lake, and Drummond Island. Island Lake is probably the worst of the four, as it's pretty much just a giant mud hole. They all have good things to get there though, so I would suggest completing Michigan to 100% to start your SnowRunner journey. Anyway, I hope I helped, and I take no responsibility for your inevitable addiction to SnowRunner. If you'd like to check out my other videos on my channel, please do. I'm always playing something else and chasing platinum trophies as well, as still playing my main SnowRunner save file, as I have still yet to finish all regions to 100%. As always, leave a like if you like the video and subscribe if you want to. I'll see you next time.